In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in Christ, at this Christmas time, let it be our care and delight to hear again the message of the angels, and in heart and mind go even to Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, and the babe lying in a manger. Therefore, let us hear and mark in Holy Scripture the tale of the loving purposes of God from the first days of our disobedience unto the glorious redemption brought us by this holy child. But first, let us pray for the needs of the whole world, for peace on earth and goodwill among all his people, for unity and fellowship within the church he came to build, and especially in this church tonight. And because this would rejoice his heart, let us remember in Jesus' name the poor and helpless, the cold, the hungry, and the oppressed, the sick and those who mourn, the lonely and the unloved, the aged and the little children, all those who know not our Lord Jesus, or who love him not, or who by sin have grieved his heart of love. Lastly, let us remember before God all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore and in a greater light, that multitude which no one can number, whose hope was in the Word made flesh, and with whom in Jesus we are one forevermore. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer up to the throne of heaven in the words which Christ himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The first lesson from the prophet Isaiah, who foretells Christ's birth and kingdom. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this.
The second lesson is from the prophet Micah, chapter 5, verses 2 through 4. But you, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has given birth. Then the rest of his brothers shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they shall all dwell secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth. The third lesson is from Luke, the first chapter. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. 
And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Joy, joy, joy for 
the child is born in this land. The promise is given, sing joy, joy, joy in the morning, sing joy, joy in the afternoon, sing joy, joy, joy for the child is born in this land. The promise is given to you this night. Promise is given to you this night. Promise is given to you. The fourth lesson from the Gospel of Duke. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. And this was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. The fifth lesson from the Gospel of Luke. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, peace among those with whom he is pleased.
The sixth lesson is written in the Gospel according to St. Matthew. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and had come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all of Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go, and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word, that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh.
we make profession of our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate with the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's begin this sermon time with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, thank you for your presence with us on this holy night. 
May we be strengthened through the proclamation of the gospel and the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable. In Jesus' name, amen. She's already got the latest generation Kindle Oasis with adjustable warm light, Wi-Fi, and 7-inch display. And she's got an Invicta Women's Angel Diamond Stainless Steel Chronographic Watch. He's got the new Kodak PixPro SP360 video camera, an Apple iPad Air with 64 gigabytes of memory and a 10.8 inch display. He also has a Rocky Mountain Altitude C70 mountain bike with 26 inch wheels. The point is what to do, what to do, what to buy, one of the classic Christmas dilemmas is trying to figure out what to get the person who has everything. These are the people who have supposedly been there, done that, bought the t-shirt, punched the ticket, and seen it all. You figure whatever you're going to put under the tree is going to be a real yawner for them. So you bail out and go with the gift card. Impersonal but never awkward. Truth is, though, that even in a culture as prosperous as ours, nobody has everything. As comedian Steve Wright puts it, though, if you really did have everything, where would you put it? We'll never have everything, read everything, or watch every movie or TV show ever made. So perhaps whatever you've put under the tree for that person in your life is going to be just fine. None of us has a chance to see everything that exists, even with the internet. Not to put a damper on an otherwise bright holiday season, but every one of us will die having missed almost everything. The good news, though, is that even if we miss almost everything, we can still catch the most important things we should never miss, like the really good news of Christmas. Now, you probably already believe that you have a pretty good idea of what shouldn't be missed at Christmas. For many people, for example, the one thing you don't want to miss at Christmas is family. Even though in this strange year it may be entirely by Zoom, getting the extended family together, remembering times and loved ones past, sharing a meal, opening presents, that's what Christmas is all about. Family is certainly a good thing that many don't want to miss. Ask a kid, and those presents are likely the things they don't want to miss at Christmas. What would Christmas be without presents? For many others, even those who aren't Christian, it's the feeling of Christmas that really matters. Lots of folks who have never set foot in a church still set up a tree, put together a shopping list, maybe even sing a few carols. But this year, I offer you another don't miss this proposition for this particular Christmas 2020. Something that most people would seem to be missing in a world where jobs are precarious, food lines are long, violence and inequity light up our TV screens, where COVID-19 and death are at the forefront in the minds of many. Reading the story in the Gospel of Luke, one important phrase seems to jump out more than the others, even if you've read it 6,000 times. Do not be afraid. Luke uses this phrase three times in the first two chapters of his Gospel, each time spoken by the angel Gabriel. It functions as a kind of thesis statement, if you will, for the story that follows. The birth, life, death, 
and resurrection of Jesus. It's because of the newborn king that the people of Israel, and we too, need no longer be afraid. We don't want to miss out on family or presence or the feeling. But Christmas is an opportunity not to miss out on being unafraid. Now the first time the angel Gabriel appears is to the old priest Zechariah, whom Luke uses as a, a kind of a link to the Old Testament and the temple system. Gabriel says to the old man, do not be afraid because your prayers have been answered. They were going to be answered in a personal sense because Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth were going to have a son who would become John the Baptist, but also answered in the larger sense that God was going to do something about the plight of his people. The people who had lived under the specter of fear and, gen and oppression for generations. Wouldn't we like to hear that our prayers have been answered? We'd like God to send Gabriel to tell us that our business is going to be prosperous again, that our furlough from work will soon be over, that a vaccine will shortly be available to us, that our grief will subside. We sure wouldn't want to miss that message. But God's way of answering our prayers is often by doing something beyond our hopes and expectations. Yes, yeah, sometimes our prayers are answered in ways that we want, but more often we see God at work in giving us what we really need when we need it. In Israel's case, God's Messiah comes as a tiny, helpless baby instead of a conquering hero. Instead of taking on the Roman oppression with military might, he would suffer and die at the hands of the empire. This is how God chooses to save the whole world, by participating in human suffering and taking it on not by bailing himself or us out of it. Our prayers are always answered by the God who walks beside us, no matter where we find ourselves. Now the second time Gabriel shows up, it's a visit to Mary. Don't be afraid, he says to her, for you have found favor with God. It isn't that Mary was especially wonderful or perfect. God chooses her because God chooses to favor the unlikely, the obscure, the innocent, and even the mistake prone to do his most important work. Like Zechariah and so many others in Scripture, Mary is offered an opportunity. She will be blessed in bringing God into the world. But as always seems to be the case, that blessing would cost her something too. As Simeon will tell her when she brings Jesus to the temple to be dedicated, a sword will pierce your own soul too. She no doubt remembered those words when she saw her son, God's son, hanging on a Roman cross. Do not be afraid. You have found favor with God. That's the second message we don't want to miss at Christmas. God favors each of us and loves each of us with an everlasting love. Loves us enough to come as one of us die for us, live with us, and in us. It's not favor that we earn. Instead, it's the ultimate gift, better than all the presents under the tree. We call that gift grace. 
and God offers it to us lavishly. God doesn't promise us a pain-free life. He didn't endure one himself in the person of Jesus. But he does promise to be with us every step of the way. The third angel announcement takes place out there in the fields beyond Bethlehem. Shepherds, who are the poorest of the poor, are watching over their flocks when the angel appears. And as the King James Bible says, I love the phrase, they were sore afraid. Do not be afraid, says the angel a third time, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. And notice the angel song that follows, Glory to God in heaven and on earth, peace. Peace, not despair, not fear. It's the good news for all the people. All the people, not just some. Jesus would grow up to preach that the kingdom of God is at hand. It's a present reality of which we see glimpses, but also a future promise. The kingdom will be fully realized in that second advent, when Jesus claims the throne once and for all. This is the grounds for hope on Christmas that no matter what happens in the present, in Christ, God promises to set the world right once and for all. In the meantime, we hear the angel voice. Do not be afraid. Money will come and go, yet still God is with us. Our health may fail, Yet still, God is with us. Our lives may be broken by sin and our past mistakes, but still, God is with us. Congregations may go through a period of uncertainty. Nevertheless, God is with us to guide us in mission and ministry. This is good news for all of us, my friends. The one thing you don't want to miss, no matter how many times you've read it. Our failures are not final. Our infirmities are not ultimately fatal. And our death will not be the last word. All the books ever written, all the movies ever made, never will amount to the can't-miss truth of this story. You get this good news, and nothing else really matters. So let's not miss out on the opportunity to be unafraid. Think of it as the perfect gift for those who think they have everything. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. We pray. Almighty God, you may this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence and in the last day, wait to the brightness of his glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The seventh lesson is recorded in the Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of all. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. 
there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. The Lord be with you. We pray. O God, who makes us glad with the yearly remembrance of the birth of your only Son, Jesus Christ, grant that as we joyfully receive him for our Redeemer, so we may with sure confidence behold him when he shall come to be our judge, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. 
and now receive the benediction. May he who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and things divine, fill you with the sweetness of inward peace and goodwill, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, upon you, and remain with you always. Now go in peace and spread the light of the Savior. Thanks be to God. Thank you.